Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have a picture of the pursuit. Sammy, hurry this up. He's going to kill somebody. We got him. We got him. They're down in the ditch. Just cut him up. Go away. Look around. He's wrecked. He's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, oh, oh. it could happen to you. Oh, man. You need some help. Because desperate criminals. Oh, God, God. Use desperate measures. No matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking videos. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, Get in could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. Sheriff John Bunnell, no matter how long you train, no matter how much experience you get, crooks are always going to find some way to surprise you. So some of the things you see tonight will be shocking and unexpected. Some will amaze you. Officers share these tapes with one another to remind themselves of the one thing they can never afford to forget. The surprises never stop. Denver, Colorado. A stolen Chevy Blazer races through midday traffic. Experienced cops have seen chases like this many times. But for rookie officer Ron Toppett, the rush is still brand new. The crook craftily avoids a spike strip. Then he boldly dodges a roadblock. It looks like this young cop is up against a seasoned pro. The sergeant decides it's time to end this reckless flight. He calls on the rookie to take the lead and ram the SUV off the road. We need to take him out here now. Toppin has practiced this maneuver dozens of times in training, but he's never done it in a real life situation. And this couldn't be more real. There's no room for air and no time to wait. Toppin moves in. It's all or nothing. In a perfectly executed move, Toppet's hit makes the blazer spin out. The impact breaks the drive shaft, stalling the vehicle and the criminal at the wheel. Troopers surround the car, cornering the suspect and his female passenger. They later discover the woman has two outstanding felony warrants of her own. The suspect was booked on investigation of car theft, felony eluding and reckless driving. All thanks to a rookie who performed like a pro. We were waiting for a proper opportunity. It would have been safe to use the maneuver. And Toppin pulled it all off without causing any injury. Not bad for a first timer. Carroll County, Georgia. It's the dead of night. Sergeant Eddie Ingram is alone on the road when he spots an erratic driver. As Sergeant Ingram approaches, the suspect suddenly decides he isn't staying for a ticket. Ingram follows, but what he doesn't know is that the driver is high on speedball, a deadly brew of cocaine and heroin. Trail 9 dispatch, he's running. He's going to be a green view headed toward Temple. The speedballer races down the freeway, heading for the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. The junkie makes a frantic switch at the last second, hoping to lose the officer, but Ingram's right on him. Drugs searing his brain, the suspect swerves out of control. 
plows over the crossroad and smashes head on into a cruiser. Coming off the freeway too fast, the momentum slingshots him into an uncontrollable skid. But the driver recovers quickly and takes off again. Ingram races to catch up, then suddenly hits dead man's curve. The suspect had just wrecked at the same spot, but Ingram keeps better control of his vehicle and somehow holds the road. Ingram approaches the wreck and sees that the suspect survived the crash, but he's pinned in the car, fighting for his life. Right down the ditch. When this junkie shot up a speedball, it may have given him a rush but it sent him charging down a path of devastation. Smashing into a cruiser. Wrecking his own car. And sending another officer reeling. The drugs may have gotten him high, but in the end, they also did him in. Camden County, Georgia. An officer is in pursuit of a stolen vehicle. The suspect drifts across lanes, and the officer thinks that the man behind the wheel is probably drunk. Fortunately, there is no traffic on the narrow two-lane highway, and the officer knows why. There is less than a mile of pavement left before the road becomes a forest trail. And at these speeds, it's not long before the inevitable happens. Totally unable to navigate around the trees, the drunken suspect slams head on into a sycamore. The jolt from the crash leaves him gasping for breath. After just a few steps, the suspect collapses and the officer makes the arrest. This guy may not have known where he was going, but the officer certainly did. And all it took was a single tree to end this 100 mile an hour nature hike. Coming up on police videos. You won't believe who's breaking the law. A hard charging mother is forced to take a timeout. A football hero runs out of bounds. And the girls next door take their party on the road. It's innocence gone wild. Next. In a one-on-one -on -one pursuit, a suspect who's willing to take chances has a clear advantage. So any officer knows the first thing to do in a chase is to call for backup. Hendry County, Florida. A desperate call for assistance reaches Deputy Sheriff Steve Whitten. The officer in this unmarked cruiser has his hands full with a car thief in a Cadillac. The last thing the crook wants is two units following him. So he's anxious to lose his new shadow. Okay, he's not stopping it. I'm gonna have to force him off before he hits somebody. Deputy Whitten pulls alongside the culprit, trying to sandwich him to a stop. But it seems the criminal knows this trick, and he has one of his own. He takes a hard left onto a side road, attempting to ditch the front unit. But both officers stay in the chase. They know that if one of them falls out, the odds are once again in the criminal's favor. The reckless outlaw heads down a back road over rough terrain. The officers slog through the mess, desperate to keep pace. Then they appear to get a break. The suspect's rear tire blows, but instead of slowing him down, he only gets wilder. 
He sends his wounded caddy skidding through a service station. Be careful, he's driving crazy. Hoping that the suspect's deflating tire will give them an edge, the officers attempt to box him in again. But the undaunted Desperado responds with another quick turn off the road. Again, both officers stick to him, following closely as he does a 180 in a field and speeds back onto the road. The unmarked unit blocks the exit, but the suspect won't be stopped that easily. The wily crook finds another way out and steers his stolen luxury ride toward a major highway. If there were ever a place to ditch his pursuers, that would be it. Give me some backup. I'm gonna need some help get him off the road. Sure enough, he no sooner reaches the highway than he has a near miss with another vehicle. It's time to move in before an innocent bystander gets caught in the crossfire. This time, the unmarked car takes the lead, and suddenly the perpetrator sees the moment he's been waiting for. He fails off the road, leaving the undercover cop in the dust and Deputy Witten alone to apprehend him. Now he has the decided advantage. Any minor slip-up by the deputy, and this car thief is home free. Get up, uh, get up now. But suddenly, his bold charge backfires. His busted rear tire loses traction, sending him careening into a tree. He tries to bail, but Witten cuts him off, hard. With nowhere left to run, this fearless fugitive's flight has finally come to an end. Officers soon learn why the suspect ran so hard. He was wanted for eight burglaries. But for all his attempts to divide and conquer his pursuers... Give me some backup. I don't need to get him off the road. In the end, one cop was all that was needed. To send him to jail. San Antonio, Texas. A call goes out on a reckless driver. Several units respond, including an ambulance. Officers hope its sheer bolt might be able to stop the wild runner. The culprit, an agitated mother, leads her three children on a precarious chase against authorities. The medic uses the size of his van to block her path. In a highly charged emotional state, the woman appears to be screaming at the terrified children. We try to stop her or she won't kill somebody. She makes a hopeless attempt to maneuver around the ambulance, forcing the police car into the median. Something's got to give, and suddenly her wheel flies off. Fire just come off the wheel. She sails into the shoulder, sparks blazing from the rim. Her car is unable to go farther, and she pulls to the side of the road. I don't have anybody with obvious need for medical attention at this point. After racing two cruisers and an ambulance, the woman insists that she's done nothing wrong. I copy. Looking in her car, police see the children are extremely frightened. As officers try to get them out, the disturbed woman becomes wild and has to be restrained. In her frenzy, she refuses to submit. You are under arrest now for disorderly conduct. Officers still have no idea why this frantic woman went on this wild escapade. They only knew she was endangering herself and her children. Fortunately, police were able to bring this raging mom under control. And for the moment at least, the children were taken to safety. It is 28. I'm 10:15 up. I got her in the Coming up on police videos. Some people just don't get it. From petty burglars to expert car thieves. This guy is on the run. He's desperate. He's trying to get away. These repeat offenders. Let's get out of here. Keep coming back for more. They're slow to learn, but quick to run. Next. Officers today have all kinds of technology at their disposal. 
But even more important than being able to outdrive or outfly a suspect is being able to outthink him. El Campo, Texas. A parole violator is on the run, and Sergeant David Juarez responds to the APB that the fugitive is headed his way. The suspect has told officers that he won't give up without a fight. And he apparently intends to live up to that promise. The vehicle's going over the overpass. Running at speeds in excess of 120 miles per hour, he's virtually out of sight in seconds. Copy, he's about a quarter of a mile ahead of me. By the time Juarez catches up, the pursuit has made its way into the next town. El Campo Dispatch has already alerted surrounding communities that the fugitive is headed their way. A Wharton City Police Unit takes the primary position. But the suspect doesn't seem to care. He turns this quiet Texas town into his own personal racetrack, barreling down narrow residential streets. An unmarked cruiser joins the pursuit. There are now three officers working together, and even more on the way. Copy, 50 miles an hour. How many vehicles involved at this point? But the condition of these small town streets prevents the officers from gaining the upper hand. Oh, man, Juarez decides to head for the edge of town, leaving Wharton officers with the lead. He knows the suspect is feeling the heat of the pursuit and may make another break for the open highway. Meanwhile, a second unmarked unit picks up the suspect's trail. Officers follow the fugitive around a dusty turn and head straight into rush hour traffic. The officers follow the suspect's path over unpaved terrain and through a barrage of obstacles. While the suspect weaves effortlessly through the quagmire, the lingering cloud of dust keeps police at bay. The fugitive has gained a considerable lead on the pursuing officers. With open road ahead, it looks like he's home free. I can't see that side of yet. But suddenly, the suspect blazes right past Juarez's hiding place. Just past me right now, that's him. As the sergeant picks up the chase, the fugitive panics and makes a grave mistake. In a desperate bid to ditch the cop, the crook tried to turn off on a side street. His wheels lock up, flipping his car into the gutter. Unbelievably, the suspect not only survives the crash, but takes off on foot. Arriving units spot the fugitive running away from the scene. The suspect tries to escape around a storage shed, but the officers are hot on his tail. And less than five minutes later, they bring him in. This pursuit sped through two communities in only 20 minutes. Traveling race speed of 110 miles an hour. But thankfully, this 100 mile an hour roundup ended before it turned deadly. Thanks to a strategic effort by five separate police officers, Justice was served safely and swiftly. Subject in custody. El Campo, Texas. Dwayne is 18 years old, too young to buy booze, but he figures he's old enough to steal it. His friend Johnny joins the break in. They head for one of the cheapest items in the store the beer. Johnny runs out with their first haul, while Dwayne rummages through the cooler for his favorite brand. Of course, four cases of beer are better than three, but he can't carry four, so he reluctantly leaves one behind. Johnny does another run to the car. Dwayne goes to the register looking for cash, but it's the middle of the night and the money was safely deposited hours ago. Johnny's getting nervous and wants to go. Johnny tells his buddy he's going to ditch him.
As Dwayne wastes time searching for a buck or two, Johnny gives him a final call. Neither of them realize they've already set off a silent alarm. Get out of here! Dwayne pillages the cooler for one last take. Then he flees straight into a police officer's gun sights. Another cruiser pulls up with Johnny handcuffed in the back seat. He may have run, but police spotted him and placed him under arrest. We got him. We got him. When he committed this heist, Dwayne was already on probation for previous offenses. But apparently he didn't learn his lesson. Foiled by greed and stupidity, Dwayne is once again in police custody. Now he faces five years behind bars for a few lousy beers. Orange County, California, home of Disneyland, the Anaheim Angels, and today, a high-speed pursuit. This is what we know so far. We have a man in a stolen truck, and police have dealt with him before. A repeat offender runs from police on the Golden State Freeway. And officers aren't about to let the car thief slip away. Police are shadowing the truck very closely, and traffic is really remarkably light at this hour. The suspect squeezes between the little traffic there is, then swerves off the freeway. It looks like he's gonna try and take this thing into the neighborhood. But officers are never farther than a few yards away. So he immediately heads back the way he came. On the freeway, he can reach top speed. You just gotta wonder if this guy knows where he's going. But police don't want him returning to the fast track. One unit makes a move. Coming up fast behind, oh, the cruiser hit him, and that did nothing. Officers try to spin him out, but the dual cab pickup is too big to be budged by the much smaller cruiser. So they devise a new plan, wear the man down. Maybe you get in front of him, block him off. 10 volts, it will be at 130. 1033 traffic, hold your traffic. For well over an hour, officers on the ground and in the air keep the suspects surrounded. That's really incredible. I mean, if you look down, police are everywhere. He can't make a move without being flanked by black and whites. Even if he could shake ground units, police choppers have him covered. He may have thought this stolen truck would be his trophy, but it's become his own rolling jail cell. I just don't know where the suspect thinks he can go. Finally, after miles and miles of chase, police perseverance pays off. The pickup is out of gas and this career criminal is out of luck. He's backing up. Looks like this thing might end peacefully. And it does. This thing is all over. From the beginning, the suspect's time was running out. Police are shadowing the truck very closely. And unfortunately for him, so was his fuel supply. Officers know that even with squadrons of cruisers and air support, that's really incredible. I mean, police are everywhere. Sometimes patience can be the most effective weapon. Still to come on police videos, girls will be girls. We love you. And boys will be boys. And cops will always be there when the kids want to play rough. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Police cruisers are built to take the hard knocks because you never know when a police pursuit will turn into a battle of the bumpers. Alcoa, Tennessee. Officers are pursuing a man who is drunk and dangerous. He's not only loaded with booze, he's loaded for bear. He has a shotgun and a rifle in the front seat. He's reaching over into the seat here. The officers need to stop him, but he steers his pickup into a busy strip mall. Into the 
officers know the maniac could start shooting at any time. They have to get him away from the public fast. Lead units keep the pressure on, while others split off, flanking ahead to help drive him out of the parking lot and onto an empty service road. The suspect is now out in the open. The lead unit shoves him on the turn, but the mini truck recovers, punching the gas in a forward charge that keeps him one step ahead of the pursuing officer. Additional units watch the pursuit roar by, just in time to see the lead unit slam the suspect's fishtailing bumper. The spinning truck loses control and stalls out off-road. Officers prepare to rush the armed man with overwhelming numbers. But this chase is not over yet. Somehow, the suspect restarts his pickup, then heads back for the open freeway. But the cops are determined to stop him cold. The lead unit punches again, whipping the suspect around. The driver lashes out at another unit, head on. Spinning wheels kick up thick clouds of dust. Although the police batter the truck relentlessly, the armed drunk still won't give up. Finally, the dust clears, and the suspect is completely boxed in. Officers swarm the felon before he has a chance to pick up his weapons. Within seconds, it's over. No one was injured, including the suspect. This belligerent drunk tore through Alcoa, Tennessee. With his foot on the gas and an arsenal at his side. He's reaching over into the seat here. But by keeping the suspect's hands on the wheel, the officers kept him from reaching his guns. And they were ultimately able to bring him to a stop. Without the suspect ever firing a shot. Longview, Texas. Bombed out on methamphetamine, a teenage girl tears through the streets of this quiet town. She's wanted for fraud with stolen credit cards. And moments ago, she almost ran over a motorcycle cop. Her passenger has no idea why she's on the run. He frantically waves out the window to tell police he wants no part of it. She makes a quick turn into a gas station. The officer follows the suspect as she races past startled car wash employees, almost hitting a frightened pedestrian. Meanwhile, a second unit circles around the other side of the building. The suspect thinks she can slip out through a back exit. But the second unit blocks her escape. The passenger puts his hands out in surrender. The junkie abandons her car, but she's quickly stopped. Frightened and pumped on adrenaline, she fights back, and it takes two officers to finally subdue her. The passenger proclaims his innocence. Sir, sir I didn't have nothing to do with that. I've been sitting in the park I don't know what she had bad on. He's a former local football hero who tries to use his bygone popularity to get out of this mess. You know my name. No, I don't know. <laughs> don't care to know. <laughs> the teenage junkie, now on her way to jail, is a dire testimony of what hard drugs will do. It's a tragic case of a life gone astray. She sleeps in her car and already has a string of prior arrests. She has a long way to go to turn her life around or this will not be her last run-in with the law. Livonia, Michigan. This car just came from a local gentleman's club. Its occupants were the main attraction. Hey, doing, lady? They were contestants in the club's amateur striptease, 
but they lost. And now they're letting off a little steam with a lot of noise. Some of us have off 500 bucks. We're mad. But these giddy suspects are guilty of more than just disturbing the peace. You know what? We are drunk. <laughs> Wait, let me see. I can see that. <laughs> no sooner do they confess than they decide they shouldn't have. And they immediately try to cover their tracks. So, how much have you guys had to drink? I didn't, I didn't drink nothing but water. But it's too late. Even if they hadn't already admitted their guilt, it doesn't take a genius to see they're smashed. Are we supposed to set the car off or what? Yeah, you probably should. The officer is extremely patient, even when the suspects decide to turn on the charm. Well, you know what, officer? You're pretty hot. Well, thank you very much. It was a nice try, but as the saying goes, flattery will get them nowhere. The officer heads back to his car to run the girls' IDs and to dodge their advances. Oh, my, my, my. They're lively. We bought you. A second unit arrives, signaling the girls' inevitable arrest. The suspects can't understand it. They've tried being honest. They've tried sweet-talking. There's only one thing they haven't tried, yet. Ladies, come back to the car. Wearing little more than a chilly breeze, the girls streak away from the car. But instead of getting off the hook, they're actually racking up more charges. <laughs> Please don't arrest us, we're Come normal on. girls. Well, you should have gone and ran through the sprinklers naked. The officers search the girls' car. Of course, it won't be necessary to frisk the suspects themselves. Hey, you don't have anything on you. Any way you look at it, they're busted. Police give the girls their clothes, some handcuffs, and a sobering dose of reality. But even after everything that's happened, the suspects are still amazed they're being locked up. I can't believe you guys are resting us. We can't even move. It wasn't gonna get arrested. When this tape showed up on the local news a few days later, both girls were stunned. They didn't know they were on camera. As drunk as they were, they barely knew their own names. Ladies, come back to the car. The driver was especially distraught to see her wild night saved for posterity. Because of her naked romp, she may never realize her career goal. And I won't be able to be a cop now. Just ahead on police videos. There's a right way, and there's a wrong way. If you're going to take the wrong way, you better be ready to face the consequences. Next. Fugitives try to run where they know officers won't go. When a criminal decides to go on the wrong side of the freeway, it's almost always the innocent victim who pays the price. Villa Rica, Georgia. The insane maneuvers of a runaway speeder has already attracted multiple police units. The chase has blown over two counties and is headed for the state line. The miles whip past as the speeder presses on, despite the growing number of officers on his tail. Apparently, this guy would rather die than turn himself in. The suspect blows past one spike strip attempt, then unflinchingly approaches another. I couldn't tell, did he get him? The wily speeder manages to elude the officer's best efforts. He missed him. Now 70 for his best. But what happens next is enough to make the most experienced police officer's heart miss a beat. Ah. 
The suspect goes head on with oncoming traffic and the chase turns from hair raising to suicidal. All officers can do is retreat in an effort to reduce pressure on the suspect. With the police off his tail, the suspect looks for a way out. And finally exits the interstate. This crook went the wrong way down a high-speed thoroughfare. But he was lucky. He got off without hurting himself or anyone else. But there are some fugitives who are not so fortunate. It is the job of police to know how to keep a pursuit safe. And there are certain places a crook can go where ground units hesitate to follow. When a crook blazes his own path, he's cut, gonna cut the median. Or gets onto a freeway by way of the off ramp. This is gonna be pretty dangerous here. The suspect will most likely be stopped not by police, but by disaster. And all too often, when a crook decides to fight highway traffic head on, he's on the wrong side of traffic here. It's the innocent motorist who pays the price. Pinellas County, Florida. Police are involved in a late night pursuit of a stolen vehicle. Getting on the, wrong way. the suspects are already going the wrong way on a one way access road and are headed for the interstate. The officers know that they have to stop these guys before they reach the end of the off ramp. As soon as they get a clear shot, they seize the moment. But somehow, the crooks manage to weasel their way back onto the road. In a final tag team effort to stop the fugitives, the officers knock the suspects out. This time for the 10 count. Get your hands up! Please your hands! Taking traffic head on is a crazy move that only a hopeless criminal would try. That's a on the wrong way. And when a fugitive decides to run against the flow of oncoming traffic, they're hoping for a miraculous escape. He's on the wrong side of traffic. But more often than not, their way out could turn into a dead end. Buenos Aires, Argentina. A large group of students rally for educational reform. Filled with pent-up frustration, a few of the students lash out at each other. Things quickly get out of hand. Riot police are called in. Being a symbol of authority, they become a natural target for the crowd's extreme tactics. The students bombard officers with rocks and firebombs. Some resourceful rioters even hurl dangerous javelins. Word gets out that the organizers of this now unorganized protest may be stationed in a local restaurant. Police storm the establishment. It's mass confusion. Two children huddle in fear. Innocent bystanders to the mayhem. Realizing how out of control things have become, the protest leaders give up without a struggle. But the damage has already been done. And when the smoke clears, no one is won. These students meant well, but when a few unruly groups turned a significant protest into an excuse to riot, everyone suffered. Important student concerns were overshadowed by senseless violence. And now the protesters, along with citizens and police, are left to pick up the pieces of a town turned upside down. Coming up on police videos. When a speeding car thief crosses the state line, his single crime earns him double trouble. Next. Some criminals still believe the myth that the police can't chase them across state lines. But any fugitive who thinks he can get away by making a run for the border is in for a rude awakening.
Williamsburg, Kentucky. Officer Danny Shelley joins a pursuit that began in Tennessee. It seems this crook swiped a car right on the state line, then quickly crossed over the border thinking the police couldn't follow him. But instead of being free, he now finds himself with two sets of black and whites on his tail. The driver panics. He didn't expect to be involved in a real chase. He blazes wildly down the highway, going 120 miles an hour. With a fugitive this reckless, Shelley wastes no time in showing him he means business. Yeah, I'm about to take him out of the camp. But that only makes this delusional bandit more anxious to get away. The fast-driving felon loses the officers in some heavy traffic and seemingly disappears from the road. Suddenly, up ahead, an officer spots him headed back the other way. Apparently, he's given up his plan and has reversed course toward Tennessee. But the Kentucky troopers want to nail this outlaw on their home turf. They catch up to him behind an 18-wheeler. The suspect tries to ditch them on the shoulder, but they're waiting for him when he reappears on the other side. Kentucky Deputy Chris Stack pulls alongside Shelley. Now that they have both lanes covered, they wait for a clean shot to ram him off the road. As the chase once again nears the border, the crook makes a final frantic ploy. He reaches across the seat to make officers think he has a gun. Deputy Stack isn't about to let him fire a single shot. The thief tries to signal the surrender, but the damage has already been done. His interstate flight has just come to an end, just a hundred yards from the state line. The suspect was taken to a hospital for his injuries, but he didn't seem to learn anything from this crazy chase. Only 24 hours later, he tried to escape from the infirmary. It seems some people never catch on. If you commit a crime, it doesn't matter where you run. Sooner or later, you're bound to get busted. From the day a rookie cop hits the streets, he sees it all. For pardoned criminals who never give up, to first time offenders who made that one mistake. Some will never run afoul again. Some will make it a lifestyle. But in the heat of the moment, regardless of the crime, a cop will always act by the letter of the law.